Bud, the kid, who had to be taught what it meant to be an elder and a man. John, this guy just called Pa a liar and a drunk. That invitation to pick up a gun still holds for Johnny Elder. <laughs> Interesting facts about famous people. Henry Hathaway, John Wayne Westerns. Wayne made more Westerns than practically anyone. Of course, he didn't do this alone. Over his long career, he worked with great directors like John Ford, Henry Hathaway, Howard Hawks, and more. Today, we will take a look at those made by Henry Hathaway. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many, many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate it. Let's get into it. The Shepherd of the Hills, 1941. Young Matt Masters, an Ozark Mountains moonshiner, hates the father he has never seen who apparently deserted Matt's mother and left her to die. His obsession contributes to the hatred rampant in the mountains. However, the arrival of a stranger, Daniel Howard, begins to positively affect the mountain people, who learn to shed their hatred under his gentle influence. Still, Matt does not quite trust Howard. The Hayes office were shocked and appalled by the scene in which Sammy removes her shirt and displays her bare back to the camera. Director Henry Hathaway assured the office that it was actually a man doubling for Betty Field during that particular moment. Field, as well as John Wayne, corroborated this. Years later, Field revealed that it was indeed her own back that was shown. You've got to turn back. Turn back from killing. Get out of the way, Sammy. If you go, it's all ended between us. Rio Bravo, 1959. Sheriff John T. Chance has his hands full after arresting Joe Burdett for murder. He knows that Burdett's brother, Nathan, a powerful rancher, will go to any lengths to get him out of jail. Chance's good friend, Pat Wheeler, offers to help, but within 20 minutes of making the offer, he's gunned down in the street, shot in the back. That leaves his elderly deputy, Stumpy, the town drunk, dude, once a deputy and a pretty good shot when he was sober, and a young hand, Colorado, who used to work for Wheeler. Nathan Burdett, meanwhile, has a couple of dozen men at his disposal. Chance does his best to prepare, all the while romancing a pretty gambler who goes by the name of Feathers. John Wayne had deliberately moved away from Westerns after the searches, 1956, but none of his films since then had been particularly successful or well received. This film was a return to the genre for him. I said, where are you going? You got no use for a man you can't depend on. One bad night and I'm done for. Better go easy on that stuff. That makes three you have. Yep. You'd be lying because that's what I am, a, a soft-headed idiot. There isn't any other explanation for staying around here and fighting myself. North to Alaska, 1960. Sam and George strike gold in Alaska. George sends Sam to Seattle to bring George's fiance back to Alaska. Sam finds she is already married and returns instead with Angel. Sam, after trying to get George and Angel together, finally romances Angel, who, in the meantime, is busy fighting off the advances of George's younger brother, Billy. Frankie is a con man, trying to steal the partner's gold claim. In the final fight scene, you can actually see John Wayne without his wig as he falls backwards after being punched. For his claim and his lady, even if she wasn't. That's it. You're in love with Sam. Oh, oh no. Oh, I'm not. yes, you are. Uh, has he never tried to stuff money down the front of you? No. Did he ever try and smack you? Uh, 
No. Um, on the boat or in Seattle, you and he... Slickest operator north of the Yukon. Young in years, but big in ideas. If you knew, would you love me too? And the international beauty with, with them all. Instead of jumping into the bay, I'm going to jump into a gold mine. And mister, am I going to jump? Join the adventurers, the gold craze, the con men, the dance hall queen, and the boldest, brazenest buckaroos who ever panned for treasure. Always spoiling for a fight or fighting for the spoils. Huzzy. Prince. Now come on, tell me. Well, tell what? Us, Sam. <laughs> Circus World, 1964. In the early years of the 20th century, Matt Masters takes his rambling Wild West show to Europe. His decision is prompted by his desire to find Lily Alfredo, who disappeared 14 years earlier following the death of her husband, the flying Alfredo. At the time, it was believed that Alfredo dived to his death deliberately when he realized his wife loved Matt and not him. Tony, a beautiful trapeze performer, raised by Matt is actually Lily's daughter, and she is in love with Steve McKay, one of the stars on Matt's show. Whilst filming a scene where the main tent catches fire, John Wayne was almost killed when the set collapsed as he was fighting the fire. Wayne was to be cued by the assistant director when to leave before the set was to collapse in flames. Either Wayne did not hear the cue, or the AD mistimed it. It was never determined which, but the flaming set began to collapse before Wayne got out. He escaped with just a few seconds to spare before the entire set would have fallen down on top of him. Without a net. I still love you, Matt. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Then or now. Starring that star, a monster showman of the circus world. Italy's vivacious and beautiful Claudia Cardinale as the line and a star who has set the world by its ears for a decade. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, Killed himself. Oh, I know, I know everything. I know what you are and what he is. Tony, Tony we only want You wanted Matt again. That's what you wanted. To roll around in filth with Tony. Matt again. Well, here he is. Take him! Take him! Circus World also stars... Come on, Steve, knock on us! A million yards of canvas covering the big top from Brooklyn to Barcelona, Berlin to Paris, Copenhagen to London, and even Barnum never had a word for scenes like these. Join in the applause for the... The Sons of Katie Elder, 1965. The Elder Boys return to Clearwater, Texas for their mother's funeral. John, the eldest, is a well-known gunfighter and trouble follows him wherever he goes. The boys try to get their ranch back from the town's gunsmith, who won it from their father in the card game, after which he is murdered. Troubles come, however, just because they carry the Elder name. This movie marked the return of John Wayne to work after having a cancerous lung and two ribs removed just four months earlier. He insisted on doing some of his own stunts to, to show the public that the illness big, hadn't wild, slowed him down. Beautiful woman. You get a kid raised up to where he's got some size. And there's Texas, whispering in his ear, smiling, saying, come on out with me and have some fun. It's hard enough to raise children any place, she'd say. But you gotta fight Texas. Mother hasn't a chance. The Sons of Katie Elder. Yeah. Led by Big John, the eldest. The gunslinger. The toughest. Yeah. Tom, the gambler. Who would play any game at any odds. I'm getting out of here. Matt, the quiet one. The dangerous one. Bud, the kid who had to be taught what it meant to be an elder 
and a man. John, this guy just called Pa a liar and a drunk. That invitation to pick up a gun still holds for Johnny Elder. Mary, the woman who tried the impossible, taming the sons of Katie Elder. You're going to try and find out who killed your father, aren't you? I sure am. So you can even a score, kill again. Maybe even do it in front of Bud so he can be proud of his big, tough brother. The sons of Katie Elder. Setups for paid deputies who put them in chains before they dared to kill them in ambush. Dorado, 1966, hired gunman, Cole Thornton, John Wayne, turned down a job with Bart Jason, Ed Asner, as it would mean having to fight an old sheriff friend, Robert Mitchum. Some months later, he finds out that the lawman is on the bottle, and a top gunfighter, Christopher George, is headed his way to help Jason, along with young Mississippi, James Kahn, handy with a knife, and now armed with a diabolical shotgun, Cole returns to help. John Wayne was so impressed with Christopher George's performance as the villain with a moral code that he told him during filming that he was going to work with him again. He kept his word and rehired him for Chisholm 1970 and The Train Robbers 1973. Them, Charlene Holt, who stretches friendship to the breaking point. <laughs> I thought you'd forgotten all about me. I thought that. You know something, Cole? I think we better get ourselves a new girl. Yeah. <laughs> you better not. Why not? I'm girl enough for both. Mississippi, of them. who tries to take on the gunslingers with a knife, <laughs> plus a little help. Part girl, part wildcat. Hold, just hold still now, Miss. I, I hold still. Don't shoot any more little boys, Mister. <laughs> and draws a long bow. Well, what are you going to do now? We've got two cripples, a green kid, and a noisy old... Indian fire. Indian fire. Now, how in the hell do I know what I'm going to do? A beat-up band of misfits with nothing to lose but their lives. There's a little question unanswered between us. Which one of us is best? That's right. <laughs> True Grit, 1969, 1880, Yell County, Arkansas. With revenge etched in her mind after the murder of her father by a once trusted, cowardly jackal, Lucky Matty Ross rides to Fort Smith. Now, and while aching to bring his killer to justice, Matty enlists the help of the aging US Marshal Reuben Rooster J. Cogburn, a rugged, one-eyed lawman. And before long, LaBeouf, a young Texas Ranger thirsty for bounty money, joins in. However, as the unlikely trio embarks on a dangerous journey into the heart of Indian territory, the odds are against them. But rabid vengeance keeps Matty going. Is true grit enough to see justice served? Stunt double, Jim Burke, performed the entire scene where Rooster Cogburn charged Ned Pepper's gang on horseback. John Wayne was only seen briefly in close-up, and he was riding on a trailer, not a horse. A little earlier, I gave some thought to stealing a kiss from you although you are very young, and you're unattractive to boot. But now I'm of a mind to give you five or six good licks with my belt. Well, one would be as unpleasant as the other. True Grit, a slip of a girl, a pot-bellied, one-eyed Western Marshal, and a Texas Ranger wearing breeches a size too big. Looking for sign. You couldn't see it if you saw it. They're trailing the most surprised killer the West ever knew. I'm here to take you back to Fort Smith and hang you. And I think I will not go. Now, how do you like that? Now, you mean to say that you won't go with me on your own free will? You just got it the other way around. Now, you will follow me. 
I didn't think you'd do it. I mean to kill you in one minute, Ned, or see you hanged in Fort Smith at Judge Parker's convenience. Which will it be? I call that bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. No grit, Rooster Cogburn. Not much. enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.